All right. Welcome. It's Thursday. It's uh, fireside chat time. And the theme of this week, of course, uh, for obvious reasons, has been Holy Week, Passion Week. The, those days uh, in succession, starting with Palm Sunday, leading up to, uh, of course, what we will commemorate tomorrow, Good Friday, the um, crucifixion of our Savior, and then as we move towards uh, the resurrection, Easter Sunday. So today we'll be uh, tying into the Thursday events uh, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Uh, tomorrow, again, of course, uh, Good Friday communion will be served um, by you. <laughs> you, will, um, you will have the elements. We'll have elements here uh, in the empty sanctuary, and uh, hopefully you'll have some elements, uh, bread and juice, uh, as close as you can get to that. You don't have unleavened bread, take some bread and flatten it out, um, and some juice, ideally grape juice, uh, but uh, as close as you can get to that, and then we can, we can have the bread and cup uh, together tomorrow uh, during our one-hour Good Friday uh, fireside chat service. Uh, today, of course, our shorter time, and uh, let's just jump right into it. Um, thinking about this today, I, I think because I read an article a couple days ago about uh, a memorial that just took place, a, a curbside, uh, so to speak, uh, in that the, um, the family members had to park at the curb and watch as the, the uh, employees of, of the, uh, the cemetery uh, did the interment of, of, the, uh, of the casket. Uh, of the loved one, and uh, it, it got thinking about that, thinking about a memorial that I had just done for a family uh, of refuge here uh, the week of, uh, when all this came down on, on the 13th of March. And I thought, you know, the way that we do memorials um, now is, is temporarily changed, right? Uh, and it's temporary, a um, little different, uh, of course, but something that hasn't changed is a common sentiment uh, at a memorial. Uh, this has not changed. And, and, and that common sentiment is, is those thoughts that, that go through our head. And, and I think you've probably uh, experienced this, had these feelings, had these thoughts, had these sentiments. Uh, something like this, you know, I, I, I really should have spent more time with, you can fill in the blank, you know, Uncle Joe. Uh, I, I wish I had talked more to, to, to my Aunt Mary. Or, uh, you know, I, I should have done this for such and such a person, and, and, and we think those things, and, 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 and after someone dies, it, it's not uncommon. Um, it, there's certainly no place for self-condemnation when you have those thoughts uh, on, on the, you know, shoulda, woulda, coulda type things, um, but there is a place for, for self-introspection, not self-condemnation, but certainly self-introspection, just to, to reevaluate, right, on, on how we do things, and, and when we have those kind of thoughts, ideas pop in our head, uh, and we're being introspective about it, not condemning towards ourselves. Uh, it's good to, to purpose in our hearts to, to resolve with God's strength um, to learn from them and then and do those things that we think, ah, you know, I should have done that or I should have said this and, and such. So um, similar could be said for, for those not at attending a, a memorial per se, but just those that maybe have the painful luxury uh, of knowing that their, their death is, is close, uh, or even that a crisis is coming. And so on the Thursday uh, before, uh, hours before, Jesus uh, went to the hill of Golgotha, uh, also known as Calvary, to die on the cross for us uh, on that Thursday, the day before, Jesus made sure that he accomplished some very key uh, and valuable tasks um, and it, this is not to say that Jesus didn't do these type of things beforehand, um, that he didn't wait till it was too late, uh, again, the things that he had already done, but he made a point to do them at, at, at this time, and, and Scripture makes a point to record them for us, and some of the examples of, of what I'm talking about, of, of things that, that Jesus intentionally did on that Thursday, uh, the day before his death on the cross, come from um, a couple of accounts, first in John it's gospel, uh, and then in Luke. So in John, it's gospel chapter 13. I'm going to read to you just a few verses, verses 1 and then uh, 4 and 5. So we read here in verse uh, 1, Now before the feast of the Passover, 
But when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world uh, to the Father, uh, having loved his own who were in the world, um, he loved them to the end. He loved them to the end. Verse 4 says that um, during the, the supper, and of course this would be the, uh, the Seder feast, the, the Passover meal, the, the last supper, um, that Passover meal time, he rose from supper uh, and he laid aside his garments, it says in verse 4, then he took a towel and he girded himself and then after that he poured water into a basin uh, and he began to wash the disciples' feet and, and to wipe them with the towel uh, with which he had girded. So the, the point here and the example here is that Jesus made a point to, to humbly serve his disciples with a really lowly task, quite frankly, uh, of washing their feet, uh, the, kind of the lowest task that, that a household servant would ever be assigned to. It would be the one that nobody, I don't want to do that for obvious reasons. Uh, but, but he did that. And then in John's Gospel, in, in chapter 17, um, we see another example of Jesus intentionally making a point to do something that he did prior to this, but that he made sure that this took place at the end. And that was a time for uh, focusing on intimate fellowship with, with the Father. Uh, in John uh, chapter 17, verse 21, we have recorded the words of Jesus and, and he praying to the Father and said, Father, I pray that they'd be one with you, the disciples, the followers uh, of him that they be one with you, Father, just as we are one. And so at that time, he just valued this, this fellowship that he had with the Father and desired that um, for others as well. So very intentional with that. And then the last example I want to give you is from uh, Luke's Gospel. Same time period as that Thursday and all, but this is you know, Luke's account of, of Jesus providing uh, the scripture calls it admonition, which is, is just warning with instruction. It's instructional. It's, it's edifying warning and encouragement uh, to Peter and, and then a side word to the rest of the disciples as well as it relates to temptation and such. And So let me read to you from Luke uh, chapter 22, and I'll read verse 31 and a few verses thereafter. And the Lord Jesus said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you've returned to me, strengthen your brethren. But he, Peter, said to him, Lord, I'm ready to go with you both to prison and to death. And then he, Jesus, said, I tell you, Peter, um, the rooster shall not crow this day. In other words, dawn won't break uh, before you've denied me three times that you even know me, that you even know me. And then he would go on uh, shortly thereafter and, and say uh, to, to the rest of the disciples, pray, pray that you may not enter, enter into temptation. Pray for that. And so these are examples uh, of Jesus taking some intentional steps, making a point to do something that, that he valued, that he knew was valuable. Uh, and, and so, again, those things being humbly serving, um, uh, having deep, intimate fellowship with the Father, and, and praying for others to have that as well. Uh, and, and then providing just a, a timely word, uh, an encouragement to pray uh, in that ongoing need because of the ongoing temptations uh, of life. And so these, um, these are intentional plans that Jesus made before his departure uh, from the earth. And so with us, uh, here now, um, in, in our COVID-19 lockdown mode, uh, and, and the death of, of our old normal, um, I think a lot of us have realized simple things that, that we perhaps didn't accurately value. Um, the, the expression that I think we all know, and just, yeah, yeah, I've heard that, uh, but maybe comes to light more than, than, than ever, and that is absence makes the heart grow fonder. Uh, absence makes the heart grow fonder. And so absence of, of what? Absence of, of, of people. Uh, you know, we say that a lot after a memorial, absence of people, or absence even of an activity. And so there is a heightened evaluation of, I think at this time, of, of ways that we've been blessed and in ways that we could be a blessing to others as well. Um, and so as I looked at Jesus' examples, it made me think about these things. It made me think about those things that, that we're perhaps valuing now more than ever, uh, things like uh, 
physical contact, right, with their brothers and sisters. You know, we see a fellow refugee uh, at the store, and, and maybe they're down the aisle, and oh, you know, there's, there's, there's Mike, and, and you, and you want to give him a hug or a high five, but oh, you can't. You draw your hand back, and you say, I, I can't do that right now. Um, perhaps gathering together in this empty sanctuary for, for corporate worship. That's a sweet blessing. It's a blessing to hear hundreds of other uh, of your brothers and sisters uh, sing to the Lord with you. Even if they sing off key, it's okay. You probably won't even care about that anymore because you, you value that. I miss that. I miss those times, and, and I long for those times. And, and so there's those varieties, a variety of ways, a variety of, of opportunities to serve uh, and to be served by. I was thinking of the parking lot ministry and, um, and, and just being served by them. There's probably some of you actually looking forward to somebody telling you where to go uh, in the parking spot. Um, and, and then the blessing for them to just to be out there and help make sure that everyone gets a spot to park so they could get in a service. And so that's a blessing for them to serve. And, and, and the kids' ministry, my wife Billy was just saying this morning, man, I miss, I miss the little ones. They're just holding them and assuring them it's going to be all right. Jesus loves you. Mom and dad love you. And they're just in a Bible study and they're going to be back and, and it's good. And, and so those things we value. And, and, and the cafe and the greeters and, and the blessing for them uh, uh, to do that, to serve, and then the blessing for us to receive what they do in, in our service. So those things we evaluate um, and, and value more, I think, esteem them higher. Uh, family members, right? Uh, how many of us have commented that we see people on our street hanging out um, with family um, in, in, their, in their driveway or hear them in their backyards and knowing that they're spending time um, together, and it's, it's the quantity and the quality of time. Uh, you know, there has been uh, a period, perhaps, for a lot of us is that we dismiss the, the quantity of time. Well, there's quality time, and quality time is important too, but quantity is important as well. And so we're, we're seeing that now, I think, right? We're, we're, we're evaluating that and thinking, wow, this, this, is, this is special. I, I value this more. And so all of these, I think we, we all the more now value them. And therefore, I would say, as we learn from our Savior Jesus, as, as we always do, as we're empowered by our Savior Jesus, as we always can be, um, that as we value those things more now, let's resolve now, right? Let's resolve now to value these after the crisis is over, right? Um, to, to not uh, just forget about it like often we do in those, those sentiments we have after a memorial and we just forget about those things we thought, oh, I should have, I could have, why, why didn't I? Um, and, and so we resolve to, to make those a part of what goes on after the crisis, right? Things that, that we know we, we should do and we value, things that like Jesus did. He did them at the end, but he did them all, all the time leading up to it. So um, that, that would be my encouragement uh, to you, encouragement from the Lord to me, I pass it on to you. And I want to leave you with this. Also from the same day, Thursday of Holy Week, Passion Week, um, uh, words of Jesus, also from the Gospel of John, chapter 16, uh, verse 33. It's a paraphrase uh, for you, but um, so key. Jesus said, don't lose heart. I've got this. Again, obviously a modern paraphrase, but don't lose heart. Be of good courage. You can be of good cheer. Don't lose heart. I've got this. And he does. He does. So let's pray. Uh, Father in heaven, thank you that you do have this. You have us, Lord, uh, most importantly. Uh, we are yours, and, and you have us. And as your word says, nothing could uh, snatch us out of your hand, Lord. Uh, nothing. It's, just, it's not even possible. Uh, and so, Lord, we take great courage and hope in that. Lord, that helps us not lose heart. Is just to know that, to rest in that, to trust in that. And Lord, I pray that you would help me uh, and my refuge family to resolve, to esteem, to value those people and those things, those activities, those blessings, those opportunities to serve and, and be served. Lord, we value those more and more and, um, and resolve to uh, pursue those and, and to do those and to always um, esteem them as we should. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you.